In the latest version of WhatsApp, in their desktop application for Windows, there are some file types that don't actually show a warning when they're included as an attachment and clicked on to open that file. Now this is interesting because it may or may not be considered a security vulnerability if that file that you click to open ends up running or executing code. But I'll leave it to you, I'll show you in this video so you can make that judgment call for yourself. Let me go ahead and open up Firefox as my web browser. Let's go download WhatsApp for iOS, Mac or PC. And in this case, we'll get it from the Microsoft Store. This will end up just giving us a WhatsApp installer, small thin client to actually be able to install install this without going through the Microsoft Store. Really, it ends up doing it all anyway. And I'm going to install this fresh just so you know that this is the latest rendition of WhatsApp as currently publicly available. Now it has opened up and I'm on version 2.2429.10.0 and look, this may differ again by the time I'm recording and the time this video releases, maybe things have changed. But anyway, let me go ahead and get started and connect to this with my WhatsApp on my phone. I'll scan that super quick. Make sure that's all connected. And let me start a new conversation with myself just so we can test this out. Now you might expect that WhatsApp and other messaging platforms might actually block regular executable files. So if I actually were to go to C Windows System 32, we can grab any native natural executable file. Honestly, cmd.exe is a fine candidate. Now, if I were to move that to the side and put WhatsApp over on the other half, I could go ahead and drag in the cmd.exe, the actual executable. We could enter a caption if we want. Hello, please subscribe, ha ha ha. Once I send this, if I were to click open, you'll get a notification from WhatsApp that the save failed. It won't let you open or run an executable file like a .exe. It would require you to save as and then do the whole rigmarole to actually get that set up on your computer. And the way that WhatsApp actually determines as to whether or not you're allowed to open the file or go through the save as process is presumably by a deny list of the file extension. Like if I were to copy this instance of cmd.exe, if I were to bring it over to my desktop, I could simply rename this to like a .hta file. Let's see if I can drag that in. That's another hey, hypertext application usually used to execute code in Windows. I could try to open this, say failed. Let's do another one, honestly, for just like a dot text. Just to show you that that should work just fine, we'll drag that in, click the button there, and then if I were to open this, well, hey, it's a .txt file, that's presumably innocent, but obviously this is all just a binary file, so it's gunk. But that goes to show that a .txt file extension is not in the deny list. We can make this a PowerShell script, presumably, again, just changing the file extension, send it, open it, and that is interesting, that actually opens, huh. I did not expect the PS1 file to actually open. Granted, the current handler is just opening it in Notepad, but if it were PowerShell, that could be some silly stuff. Could try it with a .bat file extension to make it a batch script. That should have a normal natural handler. So if I were to send this, open it, uh, that save failed. So the denial is kicking in again. If we really wanted to, we could go through the whole process of trying different file extensions and seeing which ones go through the deny list or are allowed, and that would be a worthwhile little effort here. That would be a kind of cool research project and maybe a worthwhile video or live stream at some point. But at least at the time of recording on July 27, 2024, I saw this article come from Bleeping Computer. WhatsApp for Windows lets Python and PHP scripts execute with no warning. We'll see it in action in just a second, but before we do, please let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video. And that are my good friends over at Anti-Siphon Training, Black Hills Information Security, and all of the awesome and incredible tribe of companies from John Strand. If you're looking to learn some sweet cybersecurity stuff, they have phenomenal training on their website alongside pay what you can training. Literally, you get to choose the price tag. You determine, hey, how much are you willing to pay for any of these courses? You can make that $500, you can make that $50, you can make that $0 if you want. Now, not all of these are coming from John Strand himself. There are other instructors, but John Strand has done another awesome thing where a whole lot of the introductory courses and classes have their lab and exercises all available for free on GitHub. I love this over on github.com slash strandjs slash intro labs. Literally the description is these are the labs for my intro classes. Yes, these are public. Yes, it's totally intentional. And if you want to take a look, we could actually drill down into the class files and take a look at the navigation. 
I'll zoom in a little bit here because they have super sweet stuff like introduction to the SOC, Security Operations Center, Linux Command Line, Memory Analysis, TCP Dump, Weblog Review, Wireshark, Rita, Nessus, Deep Blue CLI, Velociraptor, so much cool stuff, and it's all online and available for free. We've showcased some of these in other videos, but I really recommend it. And again, I'm always singing the praises of anti-siphon training, Black Hills Information Security, and all the sweet stuff by that incredible team. Thank you so much for your support of the channel, and you can check them out with the link in the video description to dive into their pay what you can courses. Now let's get back into this article talking about these file types that don't actually include a warning when you want to open or execute them. This is by Bill over at Bleeping Computer, so big shout out credit to him. Uh, and of course, want to credit the actual researcher that tracked this down. He's noting that, look, if you actually execute Python code, that does require the attack surface of Python being installed on the victim computer for it to actually have the default handler set up to invoke and execute and run that code. I know that is a little bit of a limitation, that's constraint, not to be something that as easily weaponized, but it is worthwhile for some security cases, like software developers, researchers, and of course power users on the computer. This is a lot similar to what was discussed for Telegram, and I actually have a video for that if you're interested that showcases a very similar thing, but that was using a PyZW file. In this case, WhatsApp allows you to do this with either a .pyz file or even a .php script. That is also not in their deny list. So credit where credit is due, this is coming from Saimajit Das. I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, my friend. This is him over on LinkedIn, so please give him some love. Big shout out there. Hey, sorry, quick cut, John from the future here. I just wanted to throw this in because I thought it was kind of neat. Apparently, I actually got an email from this researcher. He reached out and expressed that he had found this and he actually was referencing the old Telegram video that had that exact same issue. He said he was inspired by that video and that's what led him to track this down in WhatsApp. So very cool, genuinely, I had not seen this email. I did not know that that was an outreach previously, but I just responded minutes ago and said like, hey, actually, I just recorded this video and I'll have have it out and about. So kind of neat. Thanks so much. But if we were to get back to our Windows 11 virtual machine and let me open up a text editor, I'll just use Sublime Text here and let me save a file. We can go put this on the desktop so it's nice and easy for us and we'll call this like, I don't know, test.pyz. That is a Python file extension to work with a kind of py zip file, but let's add some syntax. Let's add the import OS so we could use a module or package to work with operating system commands. And in fact, that function called system where we could just start off small and simple opening the calculator. Now we don't have syntax highlighting. If I were to go ahead and hit control shift P in sublime text, I can set the syntax to Python. But with that saved and staged for us, we now have our test.pyz Python zip application file. Note that I do have Python already installed in this virtual machine. And again, take it with a grain of salt, whether or not that is going to be a viable attack surface for you. But if I were to go ahead and send this, now that's included. And the open button is not gonna give me that say failed notification, but it's actually gonna fire up and run the calculator. Now, obviously this is a super tiny primitive example, but we could make this malicious if we wanted to. Hey, have some malware in the case there. If I were to go search for a super simple Python reverse shell syntax, just pull it off the shelf, you know, we could grab any payload that we might like. Here I'll change our test.pyz to that syntax. Let's actually get the host and port. And I'll hop into a Kali Linux virtual machine just so we can start to hack a little bit and take a look at my IP address for the ETH0 interface, 192.168.111.179. So with that, we could make a callback if we were to listen with netcat tac l n v p tac l to listen, tac n to not resolve DNS resolution, tac v for verbose, and p for the port. I saw 5002 in the representation there. If I put these side by side, Let's change the host IP address value within Sublime Text. Now let's drag in our new test.pyz. We can go ahead and send that file. And once I hit open, fingers crossed, we'll get our connection. And we can see we do have a shell if I hit PWD. All right, in Windows, that's actually CD to display the current directory, which isn't super duper helpful. Obviously, who am I? I'm John on that Windows 11 host. And you've got that spooky command line hanging out to denote, whoop, it's still running. If I close this, that should kill the session. Now DAS had found that the .pyz file extension will come through .pyzw for a Py installer program and .evtx for Windows event logs. That's interesting. I wonder if you could do any weird stuff with that. <laughs> 
I'm curious if the .pyzw one will actually come through because that, uh, with the w prefix, I don't believe includes a window when you end up hey, executing it. So if I were to start the netcat listener again and hit open there, that actually won't display the window, so you don't have the spooky scary command prompt anymore. You can still do whatever the heck you want and, you know, you do anything. I think that can be a little bit more sinister for any payloads that you might just spam out into a group chat or send to anyone with any contacts, anything really. But look, I, this Windows 11 virtual machine that I'm using does have Windows Defender like completely nuked, removed, deleted. Uh, so it's not gonna flag and trigger on that. And sometimes you can get a reverse shell to evade antivirus anyway because it's just a TCP connection. It is what you end up doing with that shell and that command and control access later on that can still get you caught by security mechanisms. Anyway, I think the story here is still a little bit interesting though because Daz, that security researcher, reported the problem to Meta on June 3rd. It's currently July 27th. The company replied on July 15th, saying that the issue had been already reported by another researcher and it should have already been fixed. And yet, it's not, <laughs> at least at the time of recording, right? So when the researcher contacted a bleeding computer, the bug was still present in the latest WhatsApp release for Windows and they can reproduce it on even an earlier version than what I'm on right now, v2.2428.10.0. But remember that even this WhatsApp version that we're using to showcase this over in the help section, that tells me I'm on 2.2429.10. So they had a release cycle and they could have fixed this, but again, I don't know, you'll get into uh, splitting hairs in just a second. Dawes explains, I reported this issue to Meta through their bug bounty program, but unfortunately they closed it as not applicable. It's disappointing as this is a pretty straightforward flaw that could really easily be mitigated. Like obviously there's already a deny or allow list. You could just add it to the deny list. <laughs> When Bleeping Computer reached out to WhatsApp for clarification about the reason for dismissing them, they had this response. And I'm curious of your hot take. Let me know in the comments below. We've read what the researcher proposed and appreciate their submission. Malware can take many different forms, including through downloadable files meant to trick a user. It's why we warn users never to click on or open a file from somebody they don't know, regardless of how they receive it, whether it's over the WhatsApp or any other app. Um, I get that, but you're already blocking it for executable files for things that could still be executing. I'm curious why that's not in the decision to just block it. Like we saw with Telegram previously, they denied it at first, rejected the submission, and then fixed it later on. So uh, maybe the time between me releasing this video or recording it is really gonna end up being the difference here. But they explained that WhatsApp has a system in place to warn users when they're messaged by users not on their contacts list. Sure, okay. But if a user account is hijacked, then they can enumerate any of those options here. And of course, sending it to public and private chat groups. Daz expressed his appointment by literally, yeah, just add the file extension to the block list. It's already there. Addressing this issue would not only enhance the security of their users, but also demonstrate the commitment to promptly resolving security concerns. So I'd love your hot take. Is this a security concern? Look, you still have to click open, of course, and that uh, falls on the victim. But the fact that another PHP file extension, and we don't have to test that, but we could try some others, like PowerShell, PS1, or even some other Python representations. Plenty of things we could experiment with. I will leave it up to you, maybe an exercise for the reader, if you might like to tinker and experiment with other files, file types, and file extensions, and see what might get past the WhatsApp block list or deny list. Uh, I believe WhatsApp is closed source. Like, it's not open source. At least from Google results, it's telling me it's like not fully open source. Again, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But the fact that if Python were to be installed in the exact same case of Telegram, what we discussed previously, that did end up changing this, like we shouldn't just be able to click that okay and then open. Execution with the calculator I know is a small example, but any reverse shell, any other malware staging stuff, you could do whatever you want with this. All right, short video today. Big thanks to Bleepy Computer. Big thanks to the security researcher. Big thanks for you tuning into this video. And please do all those YouTube algorithm things if you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Please give some support to our sponsors. Link in the video description for all the pay what you can training. But thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.